So the first thing to do is to take it to pieces. Put it together, take the pieces, do the same old thing, isn't it? That's, that's old stuff for you, you know. That's a bit of a pattern arising here, isn't it? Yeah. So what um, engine is this? 1936 Ford Flathead V8. It's all been said sleeves put in because it was over too much oversize. It's been sleeved and rebored back out to plus 15 thou. Heads have been skinned, or faces of the block have been skinned off. Right, the crank sits in there on those three bearings. Originally, as you can see, they were white metal bearings, which means they heated the block up and melted. That's white metal bearing. It's called, Americans call it Babbitt bearings. They melt that into there, and then they line bore it through. Um, whereas a modern engine has shells, bearing shells that you can take and remove. Once this is added, it's then got to be re-white metal, which I took it to be done, but it's like, nearly 1500 quid. So what the guys do, here your caps, it's your rear cap, we all pick up or drain back, that sits in there and holds the crank. But they made me phosphor bronze thrust bearings, these are Austin Princess removable shells, so you can replace them that have been machined in half. So it's just a, instead of white metal in it, They've redone the complete crankshaft with shells. That's why they've had to notch it here to take your shell notch. So the whole lot can go together like that. Which makes it re if it does ever blow up, you can reuse it. That's the front. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. Obviously being a V8, you can't have the pistons in line with each other, they've got to be staggered to get on the crankshaft. So I now know number five is the front con rod, number one is the back con rod. When I try them on there. Because these are floating bearings, you have a pair in there. They fit in like that. But because they're floating, which is why you can get these bearings. So you've got plus 20 thou on the, X on the internals, which is that, because that crank's been ground down 20 thou. And you've got plus 8 thou on your external, because they've been ground out by 8 thou to make sure they don't fit on the inside of those properly, because you get wobble on them like that otherwise. Crank goes round and round, pistons sit on those, push the pistons up and down. But what I've got to do, it's not like a modern engine, you can't just put it together. Okay. Everything's been machined, this has been ground, these have been ground, except what they call a floating bearing. You've got two con rods per journal. New oversized shells, I mean it's 82 years old, so you've got to check everything, make sure there's no tight spots before it goes back in, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise you put it all in there, you turn it over, you get a tight spot. If I check it all now, and then put the crank in without the con rods on, check that, yeah? Then it's just making sure there's no tight spots anywhere on any of it, and then when you assemble it, you know if there is a tight spot, it's something wrong that way, down the bores, as opposed to on your rotational faces. Is there markings on these? Yeah, if you in. look on there, that little tiny left, that's left two, left two, one on the cap, one on the rod, one on the cap, so you know they match. So what are you doing? Um, just splitting the conrods out and we'll put the bearings and the conrods on that one, torque it up to 35 to 40 foot pounds, and make sure everything rotates nicely. So are all conrods built equal? No. No, you can get, like if you're doing like the mini engine, they're offset, you've got a wider flange here on two of them, 
so they're, they're handed rods you can only put them in one way but these there's no markings on them You've got oil hole there oil hole there two oil holes there so there's nothing to say which all I'll do is when they go together all the stamps that were on these I'll make sure they're all facing forwards and then everything's in the same way round do is talk it up now so you, you tighten those down to your specified settings but you don't want to do it so that your flanges here where they join are in line with a bearing join because you could catch a nick on it so you make sure that they, they don't line up so just see that little split there either side that's where the bearings joining yeah okay so you know your con rods joining there and there and not there so you don't want those lines in line when you tighten it up so how do you know how tight to do it up then? That's what that's for, it's called a torque wrench. But how do you know how <coughs> tight to do it up? Oh I see, when, as you turn the torque wrench it'll click. But how do you know what setting it should be on? Oh, I just looked on a computer. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> <laughs> now every, every engine will have its specifications written down somewhere, okay. especially one this old. So what are you looking for? Just see that's tight already. So we've got to torque them down now. Sometimes they change when they're torqued up properly. Right, grab the machine socket up. Clicks when it's tight enough, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And obviously, we have a very big issue. <laughs> big issue? Yeah. So, those con rods should move. Everything should float for nice and free. And that doesn't. And it's doing anything <laughs> but that. Hey? <laughs> and it's doing anything but that. Anything but that. That's not good next week on the workshop. So we drilled a hole in each of these pockets which lets more oil in for one and it means you can drop a pin in and lock your lifter when you adjust this nut here for your tappet adjustment which makes life a lot easier. <laughs>